Guys, thank you so much for taking some time. I'm back here. Thank you uh, for being here, doing this session with us, man. These are always a treat. So you guys have been to Nashville before, right? Or is this your first time? No, we've been here before. Anything about the city that uh, stuck out to you the last time that you were here? You just kind of have to go back, see it again. Bar, restaurant? Arnold's. Arnold's? Yeah. It's a restaurant called Arnold's. I mean, I'm assuming people here know what that is, right? What no? Oh, it's great. It's, I mean, it's delicious food. It's, um, it's like, it's like home cooked, like, I don't know, soul food vibes, I guess. It's, it's delicious, though. It's only open for a certain time during the day. <laughs> Um, so it's very exclusive. Which is kind of <laughs> typical in this city. A lot of restaurants <laughs> open every so often. Okay, so you guys, let's go into a little bit of history. Uh, you guys are a Southern California band out of the L.A. area. Can you kind of, yeah. uh, for those that don't know uh, or aren't familiar with you guys, can you kind of give us your background a little bit, how you guys came together? Um, we were just friends, and it d one day decided to be in a band. <laughs> it's true. Pretty, much, yeah. pretty I mean, pretty much. I mean, that's kind of the order of things. We were buds for a while, uh, we kind of played music like like he was in a band and I was in like a different band. And then we were just buddies. And then we decided to uh, put our heads together, I guess, and make music together. And it worked out. The first song we wrote was Sweater Weather. So, so was Sweater Weather, that right. was what, one of the first songs that you guys wrote together? It was the first song we wrote. Was yeah, it was the first song. So you guys saw uh, that, you know, that was your first big hit. You you guys have been playing it probably everywhere you go. Uh, does a moment ever come where you kind of, not not so much tired of sweater weather, but it's just it's become so such a norm to play it. Have you have you become used to it? Um, I just I just found a new uh, love for it recently, which is good because yeah, I mean, I think if you do anything over and over and over and over and over again, like you'll probably just you know the taste will become so familiar in your mouth that you kind of become a little numb to it, I guess. But you know, Sweater Weather has done a lot for us, and it's it's done a lot of really cool things, and it kind of gave us, like, a platform, you know? Like, that song is a big song, straight up. Like, w that's why our band kept going, because we wrote that song, and we were like, this feels pretty good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've learned a lot from it, I think. The sound that you guys have, it's a cool sound, uh, kind of refreshing. And w Thanks, was that dude. a sound that you, you, you guys set point. out to do? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the point, man. Like, for, for what you said, like, it's kind of fresh, like... Yeah, and especially now, like, it's funny, like, now that we've, like, done what we've, what we've gotten to do, and we're pretty much at the end of our tour, our, um, like, our album cycle for our album that had this song, Sweater Weather, on it, and, um, you know, we're about to go in and record our next record, and it's like, we're so excited to do that. So, yeah, especially because, I mean, it's uh, we kind of came up in a time where, you know, bands aren't really, like, the, the thing to talk about within music pop culture right now. Like, bands are pretty boring. So um, now I think we really have a chance to like really, really do something great. And now we have a story to tell. Like we've done a little bit, you know what I mean? Like we've grown up, we're a little bit older. Like our basis was uh, not even graduating high school when we first started this. So it's like we've kind of grown up a little bit. Yeah. It's cool. So uh, with all that said, going in to uh, approach your second album after the success of I Love You, was, uh, is there any pressure? Do you feel pressure? Just on ourselves. Just our expectations to do better, which I, I think we will. It's just part of the natural evolution. Mm -hmm. you, you really concentrate a lot on, on black and white imagery. Uh, a lot of your video stuff is in black and white, your photos. In fact, we're doing a lot of taping today in black and white. Do you still have the black and white hair going on? No, I'm trying to get it back to brown right now, and it looks atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> we deal with it, right, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you explain kind of um, just... just yeah, where where the where the whole black and white imagery comes from? Why you guys really just kind of dig the black and white? Um, because black and white means everything. <laughs> I mean, black and white is everything. It's like right and wrong, and it's good and bad, and it's uh, um, I don't know. We live in a really gray world, so I mean, between each other, we're able to be like black and white just be straightforward and like with our music we're able to do that you know like create the style we wanted to and just be honest with it i guess so that's like why we why we stick to it i know like that's it's like the best for me like i think it's a cool little world to live in i like i like the little black and white world that we're in okay cool i just wasn't sure if maybe you didn't like the color of one of your tattoos or something so in like all interviews you oh that, that was a more joke more than just that the colors i don't like it's a real crappy joke <laughs> 
All right, uh, so you guys have been touring very strong for a little while now. How do you, how do you guys kind of stay centered? You know, do you guys take something with you on the road that reminds you of home to kind of keep your, yourself centered? We each have spiritual stones that we hold and we rub together every day. Huh. I'm actually... We do. We actually do have a couple stones that some lady in San Francisco gave us. We maybe should do that. Maybe that would help. But uh, right now, <clears throat> just each other, I guess. Yeah, we. Yeah, we're all. We've all been really good buddies before the band. So, like when we're just chilling on the bus, it's just hanging out with your friends. Right. So exactly. It's pretty easy. Do you guys ever get? Do uh, you ever find that your friendship is tested, spending so much time every day on the road together? Every every second. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the most annoying in the band? Like who who picks the fight? It's not that simple, man. <laughs> I wish it was that simple. But it's like we know each other really well. I mean, down to like our tour manager who's here right now, like everybody in our crew, like we run a really tight knit show. Like we do everything internally. There's like it's all just like homies from like home and everything. So who's the dirtiest who you always have to say, clean up your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> or is it all of you? <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeremy who's you, not you, here. Yeah, that's not here. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's more, it's complicated. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We're all out here, like, doing what we're doing. Like, we all get a little sloppy. So, like, I don't know. It's kind of everybody. You know what I mean? You kind of just learn, like, how you reflect off other people, and especially when they're really close to you. It's just, it's weird. It's the most committed I think any of us have ever been to anything, and we're figuring that out. Like, mm -hmm. It's just weird. <laughs> well, Zach, you said earlier that uh, y'all set out when you uh, started the band was to make it big, to be a big band. So, that's it. you know, you're, 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 you're at that point. So is it, is it everything that you expected that it to point. be? Yeah, I don't think we're at that point. Well, I I'm sorry, for the lack of a better term, but, you know, you're, you guys have, have hit popularity. You've kind of hit into that mainstream. You're growing. You're going to continue to grow. Yeah, we've, we've hit a, a certain level of success, but the one thing about gaining any sort of success is... You just want more right after it. So, yeah, it kind of sucks because we want to keep going and keep growing and have more. But it's a weird internal yeah. internal battle, like what he said about like how you said the pressure earlier. Like The pressure is with us. Like yeah. We don't listen to our record and say, this record was the best record in the world. We listen to it and go, okay, so we wrote that, and that's how we were feeling back then. And now we grew up and did this and did that, so now we feel like this and we want to write. Like, you know what I mean? Like, So... That's the part where the success part is weird. Like, I was just looking at those like Billboard magazines out there, and there's like Enrique Iglesias and and the and the the judges on some another reality show for singers that are making it big or whatever. Like 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 those are it's on the cover of Billboard magazine, and I spent time and energy watching how our song did on Billboard because I wanted to be a part of that magazine with those people because I thought you know what I mean. I thought to myself. Like, th that's where it is. And then I'm looking at these magazines, like, I wouldn't even open these magazines, I guess. So, like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a, it's a funny reality. Like, radio is a really cool place to be, but so is the internet. I mean, that's where, like, our generation is. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be everywhere. So, okay, with social media, there's so many benefits to it, right? Are there any negatives, any downsides to social media that you guys have encountered? 100%. Oh, we're, yeah. not, we're, not, we're not real people anymore to, to, like, to, 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 like, our, to, like... Some of our fans. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's crossed it it's crossed something to where now it's like it's like and it's weird to feel it it's such a weird like receiving end to be on because it's really flattering but it's also like it's a little scary yeah yeah y'all do have some hardcore fans though some very passionate fans that they're love you guys. very passionate they're great don't get me wrong they're like they're incredible but mm -hmm. it's like it's an interesting thing to like to like go through and like live and like grow with you know what I mean because they're growing with us that's the thing like they're probably just as much of an awkward period as we are you know what I mean we're kind of going through it together which is cool like so uh we'll, we'll get to uh if anybody in the audience has a question they'd like to ask we'll get to that in just a second I had uh, we have a couple interns that work here with us so I had them write down some questions they didn't know I didn't say who it was for I just said give me five questions so let's see what okay. we get all right uh, all right, here's a good one. What's actually this is good. What's the weirdest, craziest thing you've ever seen your crowd, your audience do? Uh, <laughs> weirdest thing. Uh. Weirdest. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> We, we can move on if we... A, a, a girl <laughs> recently uh, 
told me to fuck her ass. That was pretty weird. I Straight up, that. like yeah. she was front row and she just says, fuck my ass. And I go, and I go, I'm like, I was like, yo. Yeah. Really? Like, so I gave her the microphone and I had her say it because I thought it was so ridiculous. Yeah. I thought to myself, like, <laughs> that's what know. happens at our shows. Yo, dude, you, was, I mean, uh, you asked me, like, I mean, you want the cra- I mean, that's like, I don't know, that's kind of crazy to me. I was kind of. I, I, I asked a question. It's, uh, all right, let's, yeah, let's move to the next one. Um, what, what's the worst onstage screw up you guys have ever experienced, either from yourself or another band that you shared the stage with? <laughs> oh, we had screw ups all the time, dude. Yeah. What's the one that stands out the most? This whole thing right now is a screw up. <laughs> um,. Uh, on stage, I mean, we've had things like just like things that don't work that like helps like prevents us from like, like one our, of his pedals um, will break or something, and like yeah, just and something. you can't make a certain like tone that's very important to a song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, but it's things that we get down on ourselves a lot on too because we're like, we're like, dude, like we're on the road, people are paying to see us. We should be good. We should be f-ing good. Like like bottom line. Like there's no reason. We have no no excuses for anything. It's just like so when we screw up or when something when our, when our operation is wrong goes wrong, we're like, come on, man, we're professionals out here, right? But then sometimes that mentality gets to you too much and it's bad. <laughs> so you have to find the medium. Uh, here's a golden question from the interns: Have you ever thought of creating a spinoff band called The Projects? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I mean. We would gladly sign a spin-off band called The Projects if they were from The Projects and it was real. Yeah. That sounds like a rad band to me. I bet that's the future of bands. Um, all right, here's, here's another one. Sweet guitar, bro. Can I play it? Uh, it usually never goes that far. Who, uh, I would almost, uh, this this guitar, is from McDyver. I'd, I'd probably be like, Zach, just let him play. That was brave. Where's, where's Michael? Mc, oh, there he is. Right. Good question, bro. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Here, let's do this. Let's wrap up intern questions with this one. What was your uh, What was your first jobs? Both of you. What were your? Um, I worked at Urban Outfitters. I think we all did, or most of us. I mean, at one point. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but that wasn't. We your did. First we job. did. We did. We did. That was my first. That was like my first real job. Yeah. It's hard to say. I mean, kind of. I guess uh, me and me and you when we were younger, like I've known my tour manager, our tour manager for like we we're like we're like brothers basically. But we used to work at like this uh, skate shop in our local town. But like in the back, like well, well, we would work at the shop, and then at the end of the day, they would just give us free. Shit. So so like we didn't get paid, and we were like what like I was like twelve or something. We were young, and we would just get, like, shoes and, like, just the dopest gear all the time. But they didn't even always have the coolest stuff. But we made, we made do with what we had. And then, yeah, that was, like, my first, like, that's, like, that feels like, that felt like a job. I had to, like, get there on time. And then you actually worked there for real. I wasn't legal yet. But probably uh, that. Does anybody in the audience have a question they'd like to ask the neighborhood? Anybody? Front row? On the couch? What's your favorite tattoo? Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably this one. I think this one's cool, but I don't know. I, I still feel like I haven't, maybe I haven't gotten. I don't know. I like a lot of them, actually. I like a lot, and I don't like a lot. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you said talk about your history, and then your, your lyrics and your music may change as you get more and more recognizable and more and more um, successful. What started the music when you were younger? Just the music, man. The music was the reason for the music. Like, like, like I wanna like. I wanna like. I, I read a book the other day, and I'm not trying to go all like smart guy. I read books and like I know all the because I really don't. But like I get to do it right now, so let me feel smart for a second. Um, uh, I was reading a book, and I read uh, at the end of it. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, <sighs> 
I don't know what book you're talking about. The, the, I, I told you about the quote. I, I just don't, I don't want to quote the wrong person. See, this is, this is what happens. When I have here. Give, me, give me one little second. Uh, Velvet Underground, uh, just by Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Oh, you read his book? No, I didn't. No, not the whole book, homie. I read like a chapter of a book. <laughs> and, and it was a good chapter, though. Let me tell you about it. But, but he, I, that's what I'm saying. Finally, I got through a chapter. We did it. Um, um, and he was just saying how he thinks people should die for the music. And I just thought it was really cool. Like, people have a lot of things to live for and to die for. So, like, like I think that's where it comes down to. Like, when I found it, I was just like, wow, this is great. And then, like, you know, if, if I've had a relationship with a girl or, like, you know, a friend that I was friends with and then I, you know, you fall out of friendships with people or fall in and out of love with people or whatever it is, like, music is the one thing that I guess was, like, I could guarantee. Like, I, I could guarantee, like, I could go do that. You know what I mean? So, like, I guess that's the point of it, to die for it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Next question in the front. I like I listen to rap music. That's pretty much all I listen to when it comes to music. Um, but the rest of it, like I like reading or looking at different things, like as far as like rock and roll history and that kind of stuff. But the music is really hard for me to listen to. It's just I I I don't know. I I I, I try, but my attention span is just really hard. I like looking at the rest of it, but I feel like if I listen to their music, like what if I made music like them? And I don't want to make music like anybody. I want to think how they thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any other questions? Well, no, he didn't say his music. Oh, no, no, no. I, I agree with your answer. That, I mean, yeah. the same thing. Go for it. If you had one jam session, past, present, whatever, that you could do with just any musician, you've gotten it. Huh. I don't know. Jamming with John Bonham would probably be pretty cool. That'd be insane. Because he would just probably make whatever you play super tight. What about you? Um, oh, sorry. When I get asked questions like this, I feel like it's like life or death. So if I answer the wrong person, then later at night when I'm thinking to myself when I'm going to bed, like, fuck, maybe I should answer that question with somebody else. <laughs> and I'm trying to think about that right now. Ooh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. All right. I just, I'm sorry. No, that's cool. Any other questions? I have an easy one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, well, I'm just kidding. I'm 22. I'm 22 also. Just turn. When's your birthday? August 21st. I'm about to be 23. July 3rd. Thank you. Okay. That's uh, it. Here we go. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, let's wrap it up, man. Let's, uh, let's do the song, uh, the big one that started it all off for you guys, Sweater Weather. Weather.